Interview with Flossie Bryant, August 30th, 1992. Done at 2702 Main Street, Melbourne, Florida. Interviewer Nancy Yaseko. Cameraman Robert Gilbert. Equipment Camera Sony BVP50. Beta SP Recorder Sony BVW35. Audio on Channels 2 and 4. Copyright Brevard County Historical Commission, 1992. Flossie Bryant, Tape 1. when you were born and where? I was born April the 9th, 1907 in Jacksonville, Florida. And what brought you to Brevard County? Uh, to Brevard County, my father was a minister and he was uh, appointed the pastor of Greater Allen Chapel Amy Church. At that time they called it Allen Chapel but now it's the Greater Allen Chapel Amy Church. And of course, we all came down here. My mother and all the children came here. When was that? I don't know if I can think of the year to tell you, <laughs> but it was, oh, about, I was about, what? I was about fifth or sixth grade. Mm -hmm. Well, this mm -hmm. was a big change from Jacksonville. Oh, yes. It was a big change. <laughs> But then we knew we had to stay, so we just made ourselves busy. And of course, I've always loved to work in the church, you know. So I just came around here, got into Sunday school, and just went on start working in the church here. Mm -hmm. What were your first impressions of this area? Well, it, really, when I first got here, I wanted to go back to Jacksonville. <laughs> but then the people in the church were nice. They were very kind very thoughtful and considerate because when we first got here, see, we were in the parsonage because that's where the ministers had to go. But my father pretty soon bought a place for us here where we could be right there. And it's the, the place that he bought is still there on Brothers Avenue. Mm -hmm. You know, because then, then they sent him to another charge. No, I'm sorry, I apologize. My father died here. That's what happened. And this is why I stayed here. He died here, so I just decided to stay. What, was, to okay. what was your house like? The house we were in? Mm -hmm. Well, really, it's, it, the house we were in was more on a modern type than most of the houses that were around us. Because Daddy tried to give us the things that we wanted, and we, as long as we act nice. See, this was our incentive to do the right thing. If you act nice, if you do right, Daddy will try to give you whatever you need, and most of what you say you want. And this was the thing that we really, oh, he was just real nice to us. See, because my older sister always wanted a car, and uh, for when my older sister finished high school, well, he got her a six-passenger Sudebaker. That was a graduation gift. Mm -hmm. So he really did things to encourage us to want to be good. And thank God all of us turned out to be good. And I was so glad. I'm glad for him. I'm the only one living, though. The others have gone on to the great beyond. Mm -hmm. What did your mother think of this place? She's the one who really had to, to wrestle with the... Didn't she? Well, I tell you what, my mother at first... Uh, we moved into this place, and of course, she made some changes. She, my daddy was a carpenter, anyway. So they immediately made some changes in the place so that we could uh, be, feel comfortable and free. So that's what the first thing that she did. And at first, my daddy said, let's get in the place first. She said, no, let's God fix it up. I want these children to enjoy. Mm -hmm. That's what they did. <laughs> she was a beautiful person. Bless her heart. Did y'all have a garden? Oh, yes. Oh, we, you know what? I like, we all like vegetables. So we, they had greens. We had a garden of different kinds of greens, collard greens and mustard greens and like that. So they had, it was on the side of the church there. There was another lot there that did not belong to the church, but they let the church use it. So they told my father he could plant it, so he planted a nice garden there for us. And sugar cane, don't think that. I love that he kept us some sugar cane. <laughs> Did you ever 
grow pineapples? I know some people. It didn't grow pineapples. Mm -hmm. No, I don't know. We had oranges now. We had oranges there, and we had a peach tree, because we like peaches. So he had a peach tree there for us. But now the plums. He didn't get the plums, so we had to, we had to buy the plums for us. <laughs> He kind of spoiled us, though, but then we all were good because of it, you know. Then any of us make him shame or embarrass him, and we all worked right in the church right along with him. So this is what the people really appreciated. Mm -hmm. um, did uh, any of your family like to go hunting or fishing? Uh -huh. Yes, we used to go fishing, and I could catch some, too. <laughs> And my father would go hunting, and they used to catch rabbits and things like that, and bring them back home. My daddy liked to go hunting. My brother liked to go hunting. Now, I didn't like to go hunting. <laughs> I think if the things that would catch there, I'd go get, I'd get in there and try to help fix and cook them, but I didn't get them back to hunting. Uh, well, when you went fishing, where would you go fishing? Would you go down to the river or in the creek? Or? We would go down, we used to go to, go to the river, we used to go to the creek, and then uh, my dad used to take us to the car and take us other places where they had good fishing places because he knew we liked to fish. And I'd love to catch them brims, oh goodness. <laughs> I'd see them coming and I'd be so happy. <laughs> I'm a big fish eater now. Uh, I guess there were a few mosquitoes back in those oh. days. Oh, where are they? Mosquitoes? They were awful. And like when you'd go to park your car to go into a store or something, you just and you expect to be whipped up if you had to put something on and keep from it. So most time before we leave, my mother and dad would make sure we put something on it. They used to be terrible. You wouldn't believe it the way it is now, but they used to be terrible. You go to park, it's like you, you know, you go and stand up and talk on a corner or something. All the time, that's what you'd be doing. <laughs> okay, what was the transportation like? You said you had a car. Uh, we had a car, but most people had, uh, see, we started off with a horse and buggy in Jacksonville, but when we, my daddy got a car before we left Jacksonville and we came here. Then, of course, see my, daughter, my older sister finished high school uh, here. So then my father gave her this uh, Studebaker for her graduation. Mm -hmm. How were the roads? Huh? How were the roads? Well, they were rough and bumpy. They weren't smooth roads like you have now. You'd go to a ditch and you had to slow your car to go on by and you'd go around. This is what you had to contend with. Did that for quite a good while. Mm -hmm. But they got better and which I'm glad they did. Mm -hmm. Did you ever take a ride on the train? Oh, yes. See, my father then was, he was presiding elder for a long time. And I was the one wanted to follow him everywhere. <laughs> Because they say that was the very image of my daddy. So my other sisters looked more like my mother. Say, but any time they'd see me, and when, and when he passed, it was sad. I hated to go out anywhere because when he passed, if I shared a tear, you'd all of them go to Holland and going on because I was so much like my daddy. That was just the image of my daddy. The others took color between my daddy and my mother. But I took color just like my daddy and I was just like him. Mm -hmm. He used to take train trips? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Well, at that time, they, they were going to Lake City. Uh, his uh, uh, missions taking the churches he had in charge. And I'd love to go with him. I used to go with him. So I used to sing like a mockingbird. So uh, I would always go and sing. Uh, I'd love flippy. <laughs> I sing in the choir now, but I sing out too. I can't sing. I sang I had a good soprano voice, but I thought alto was the prettiest thing. Oh, I just loved alto. And they said, the, the, they told me that I ruined my voice.
but I sang an alto. And then the, so when that guy said lyric soprano, I couldn't sing it anymore. Mm. So today I sang alto in the choir. <laughs> Up and down to yes, uh, he would go to Lake City, mm -hmm. the, the places he would have to go. He would uh, get the train and go up to, didn't go all the way to Miami at that time. I'm trying to, trying to think. No, it wasn't Vero Beach, I think it was, Vero Beach. You know, it wasn't all the way to Miami, it was on Vero Beach and there, and I'd be, they didn't let me go, I'd cry, so they, they let her go. <laughs> and I just followed him around. Uh, did you ever go out on boats or little boats out in the river? Did yes. And uh, I went out on the boat also with, uh, what's this girl again? No. Since I've been up some side, we've been in that same water. I can't call him a girl name, but I just, you got a picture up there we're talking about. Is that Emma? Hmm? Emma? No, no, no. You know the picture I gave you of oh, all that? Oh, Zora? Mm hmm Yes, right. And we went back to the same water, and went out there one day, uh, went to see her, and she used to come to see me, and I used to go to see her. And then she started teaching at our school. I used to go pick her up because she didn't have a way to get here and I'd go take her back home. So I went up there one time and she decided that day she was, wasn't coming to school, she was going to get in the boat. And she's out there by herself in the boat, reading. She'd have her books read and just be reading. So I asked her, I said, girl, I said, you stay out here in this boat like this? She said, I enjoy it out here. She said, I can concentrate, I can think. Mm -hmm. And she'd be out there in that boat. I did have a picture of it, but someone asked for it for some purpose, and they did bring it back. Well, you knew her, you knew her pretty well. Yes, I did. <laughs> what can you, else can you tell us about her? She was a person, I mean, and if you didn't know her, you might not uh, really get, you know, around. But if you really know her, you would love her. She was a beautiful person very understanding and would always try to say something to help you. Like you were talking about something, she said, maybe why don't you try so and so, that might do something such a thing, you should try that. So I said, no, I believe we will. Get the, she wouldn't forget, she said, did it work out all right? I said, oh, yes, just fine. <laughs> she was really a nice person. But a lot of people didn't understand her. See? But she's not a, she wasn't a flippy, see. But she's very nice, she wore a hat most of the time. Very seldom you see it just there. She's had that, that hat on. Mm -hmm. But she, she was a very understanding person to talk with. And on most subjects you talk on, she could tell you something about it. Very knowledgeable. Mm -hmm. How did you all meet? What happened? I was trying to get that in my mind. How did we meet? Oh, I met her through, she's dead now, Mrs. Um, she's up in, she was, lives in our galley, Miss Tucker. Mm -hmm. And then she used to go to see Miss Tucker, she'd come to see me. Come to see me, she'd go to see Miss Tucker. Uh, that's the way she did. So uh, occasionally we would get together. But then Miss Tucker got a little jealous because she started spending a little more time down here. But she said we were talking more of the same language, you know, and could uh, converse together. And so Miss Tucker kind of got hot with both of us. <laughs> okay, let's uh, cut. Did Zora ever talk to you about her writing? Oh, yes. And you know what, I, I, I'm just so sorry. I had a number of her writings. She gave me some of them, but did you know, I don't know, I guess you know you tell people you have these things. When they go through your books and things, so I had them inside the book where I had her picture and everything. You know, I can't even find out one, mm -hmm. not one. And she wrote a little ditty. <laughs> 
she was in the boat, and I went up there to see her. And, she, the, and I parked the car. I said, girl, why don't you come out in here? I said, why are you staying out there in that boat? Don't you sleep and stay in here? She said, why don't you come out here? I said, uh-uh, uh-uh. Well, I was kind of afraid of the water. So she talked from that day. She said, well, OK, I'm coming in after a while. She said, but I, I said, how often do you? She said, I come out here almost every day and sit in this boat and write or read things up. I said, really? She said, yes. She said, that's what you do. She said, I can think out here. And I had a chance to see in that boat one time. Mm-hmm. Got there by herself. It was excuse me. I understand that her father was a minister too. Yes, she said he was. Mm -hmm. Did you ever talk mm -hmm. about that? Yeah, she told, told me about her father. And when we got through talking, she said, you know, maybe that's why I started liking you. She said, because uh, we had about the same background and training. I said, really? She said, yes. I said, well, good. I said, well, good. I said, maybe it is why. <laughs> but I, I went to Fort Pierce to see her, and to my surprise, she had passed. And they didn't, I mean, no one told us about anything. And a young lady there said they were trying to put her on a pauper's grave, and so she told her, no, no, no. She said, why don't you let the people know about it? But they didn't. When I, when I know about it, I went out there, I saw the grave way where she was. I didn't even know that she had passed. I really hated that because she could have had a nice burial with our help. But some lady uh, said she would not let her be buried like that, and she went to the trouble to put things away for her. Mm -hmm. I, I, I just hated it. It's just, it was a sad thing. But I just went down, and when I got there, they, I asked for her. They said, well, okay, so we'll take you to see her. And I guess they thought I knew she was dead. They ran to the grave. I said, wait a minute. What you doing? What? I said, I thought you were trying to be funny. Now. I said, what you coming out here to the grave? Now? She said, Zora Neal is dead and buried. I said, what? I said, all those friends she had, you all wouldn't even let us know it. This lady said, well, one lady, and they were putting her in this pauper's grave. She told them, no, no. Mm -mm. So that was too talented, too great a woman for that to happen to her. And she went and had paid for the expenses for her to be buried properly. I said, Lord, I, that was a sad thing to happen. I just hated it, but we didn't know anything about it because we certainly would have done something about it. Mm -hmm. Well, she was part of the community here. Mm -hmm. she, she was very much part of your community. It's what happened is she lived in Orgale, but when we got to talking, I asked her, would she like to have you know, some sub work and things. So I went out to school to the principal and told him, I said, uh, this lady is qualified. I said, she has her degrees. I said, and could we give her some help? I said, she needs some money. And he said, oh, yes. She said, he said, bring her in. So I did. I went up to Argyle and got her, and I carried her out there to Stone School. At the Stone School is where she started working. Mm -hmm. And very, oh, she had beautiful ideas. Beautiful idea. She's very talented. Mm -hmm. Very talented. What would she tell the students? Do you, rec you recall what she would tell her students? You know, just about, just like they were, if they were talking about, if their lesson was about something, I mean, she knew something about it. I don't know where she'd go and look it up, you know, right then, or she just had it in her brain, but she could tell them. She was very, very, I thought she was very talented. But now, she didn't go around saying she could do that now. She would, I can see her now, but it's, she used to wear this, not two-piece, it was a dress, she had a, a belt on, and this hat, a little band around it. And she just wore it most of the time. That was you know, what she had. She'd be clean. That's what she had most of the time on. Mm -hmm. She worked out at Patrick Air Force Base. That's right. Mm -hmm. She worked out there. What was she doing out there? That 
I really don't know. Mm -hmm. And then she got there. Mm -hmm. uh, because first to get out there, I had to go out to the base with her, and I waited for her to go in the check with her. Then she got, uh, I forgot whether she got her little car herself or what she did, but anyway, I didn't have to. Uh, someone was going, a number of people going out there. So I found someone that did, you know, take her on out. Stayed there for a while, and then she went to Fort Pierce. And that was it. Tell me a little bit about your education. Where did you go to school? I went to school. First, when, when we were here in school, when we were here in Young, my daddy let me go to school here for a while. And he didn't like that, so he sent me back to Jacksonville, Edward Walters College. So I went to Edward Walters College. I went to um, New York University. In fact, my master's degree is from New York University. Mm. I went to New York University about, what was it, two full summers. One full summer and a half summer. And uh, I completed the requirements. The question came up about how could she get it now? And they told her that she did the work. And whether or not, say, she will graduate. Is they, they questioned the graduation as early as it was. But the thing of it was, it was just luck that I knew with the stuff that we were you know, having, and it was good for me. And then my mother made me live in the library, so <laughs> I knew to go to the library. Well, afterwards it was pretty good, but the thing, see, we were, we were in school in Jacksonville anyway. See, when my father came here, they thought they would try to school here, but they sent us on back to Jacksonville. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Went on back there. Thought that would be a better, thought that would be a better school for mm -hmm. you. Mm-hmm. Yes, he sent us on back there. Okay. Um, you went into teaching for your profession. Yes, I did. Mm-hmm. I really did. Yes, I taught 42 years, and I'm not bragging, but I don't care when company would come to the schoolhouse, right out there, they'd come to my room first, because it was always ready, it was always clean, it was always ready. So if, and then they would get ready to other teachers to get ready. I didn't know it for a long time. So finally, one day, they, uh, the principal told me that they said, you know, say, uh, we are grateful that you uh, have your place straight all the time. Because, see, because sometimes the company comes and they don't know they're coming. They come, you know, they come visiting, white, black, all would come. They know they could come right on in their room. Because you know what I would do? I'd go out there. I'd tell them, don't scrub my room. I scrub it myself. I'd come home get my bucket and everything. When they leave from out there, I'd go out there and scrub. So the policeman uh, came in there one day and told me, said, please, one night, and told me, please don't stay out here anymore. So we have been watching, watching over you, because I see I'd call myself going when everybody was away from out there. Mm -hmm. But to my surprise, it wasn't the wise thing to do. See, because it was dangerous. So they came in and told me, said, now, Try to do what you're going to do in the daytime, or let us know, let us know that you're coming out so that we can come out here and protect you. So, but I stopped going at night then, because it, it, it frightened me. <laughs> it right. What grade level did you teach? What I, my specialty was first grade, because I wanted to start children off right. And then they took me, the parents wanted me to go to second with the children. Then they wanted me to take them to third. Then they complained to take them to fourth. And I drew the line. I said, I'm not going any further. I told my principal, he said, well, we want her to stay in to start the children off. So she's a good first grade teacher. That's why we wanted her there. So I asked him, could I go back in first grade? And I did, and that's where I stayed. But I, I, I enjoyed that. Oh, here we had our uh, retirement the school reunion here this year. 
And that's the first thing one of uh, my little first grade students used to be told me. She said, you know one thing? She said, you taught me how to write my name. And if you didn't leave first, if you couldn't write your name, you don't leave first grade. I said, because I don't care what you do, you got to know how to write your name. So they said, well, after I said, we sure miss you, say, because a lot of them still can't write the name. I said, I'm sorry about that. But I made, they had to learn to write their name. Because you, you got, spell your name. If you didn't know all alphabets, you knew every letter in your name. And they did that before they left first grade. They had to. So she was talking about it when she came down to the retirement this year. She said, how glad she was. She said, you taught me how to spell my name and how to write. She said, I never will forget it. I said, if that's all you learned in first grade, I'm glad of that. <laughs> Where you taught, what was the name of that school? The first school that I taught in? Mm -hmm. Let me see, what did I teach in first? Was it Stone School? I'm trying to think. I think. Well, was it a vo vocational school, Melbourne Vocational School, or was that? You're right. <laughs> no, I couldn't think. It, it, it was at. Right behind us here, right over in that area. It's, you know where it, what is there now? They have the park there. Because the children go out and play, and they got the building there from the plane. That's where the old school was. Mm -hmm. It was there. But in December, the school burned down in December because they, did, they didn't put it back anymore. teachers were there at that school? About five. <laughs> How many kids? It's starting off. <coughs> I, I, s I had that number down so It must have been about, that's why they had to get some more teachers. Must approximately, must have been about 400 children there, oh. approximately that. But what, what we did, the first grade, See, now first graders wouldn't have the number of children that we had then. Because, see, you get 35 and 40 children. And I just stayed on my knees in prayer. God just helped me through. I just asked him, please help me to help those children. But, see, a lot of them don't think about prayer. So, see, they run into a lot of problems. They, mine was kind of rather smooth sailing, considering. Mm -hmm. Interview with Flossie Bryant, August the 30th, 1992, at 2702 Main Street, Melbourne, Florida. Interviewer, Nancy Yaseko, cameraman, Robert Gilbert. Equipment, camera, Sony BVP50, Beta SP recorder, Sony BVW35. Audio on channels two and four. Copyright, Brevard County Historical Commission, 1992. Flossie Bryant, tape two. See, when I first started teaching, uh, they said that I was too young to teach. But I went on, they told me I wasn't going to be able to continue working because of that. So when, when my principal and the supervisor got in the wind of it, they went up there and told them, said, that, you, you say she's a child. She's not 18, which is true. He said, but she is the best teacher that I got. He said, and we don't, we don't, intend to let her go. So see, I didn't know this. So finally someone that heard them talking before they, this conversation saying that I had to leave. And I said, well, that's okay. I said, I just find a job somewhere. I said, I know I see a lot of people waiting table. I just go wait table. So they, when they got to me with it, they said that, um, they asked me questions again, how old are you? And I told them. They said, uh, you know you're supposed to be 18 to start teaching. I said, no, I didn't know that. <laughs> he said, well, they didn't tell you? I said, well, I didn't ask them. He said, look, he kept looking at my principal and looked back at me, look at the principal and looked back at me. He 
and say, well, what, what do you think about teaching? I say, it's just something that I love to do. I say, and I say, really, I guess if I don't get paid, I think I'd do it anyway. He said, say that again, and I repeat it. He said, well, I said, uh, do you really like it? I said, yes. I, and I said, no, I said, I love it. I said, I love to see children unfold. I said, I can see them when I get start them off. So when you start a child off, I said, it's not like if someone else has ruined it starting it. I say, but so he said, I understand you're a good first grade teacher. I said, well, I try to be. I said, and I pray and ask the Lord to help me to be. That's one thing. He said, you do what? I said, I pray and ask the Lord. Every morning when I get up and get on my knees, help me do some good thing to help some child today. And I did that all my life through. And it paid off because I, everything I went into looked like God just let it be a success. And I appreciate it. So that therefore, I was rated as one of, one of the outstanding teachers in the community. So I, I appreciated that. And after I got up some size, uh, much older, anything that they were having and it was any note for teachers, see, I was a part of it. So then I said, well, I hope that those that I have tried to guide will do. Come to find here the other day, the young fella say, and I tried to be just like my teacher. I tried to imitate a three. I'm going to have to speak. <laughs> I better say, saying, I'm trying to be just like she is, and I hope when I grow older, I can still be like she was. I say, well, I say, well, Lord, thank you, Lord, thank you. It was kind of amusing, though. Two or three of them got up to talk. Say, stand up, first grade teacher. They said, come to the roster once more. <laughs> So I went up there and I smiled. They asked me to talk. I said, see here, my children will talk for me. I don't need to say anything. I'm happy to be here. I'm thankful that God let me live to see them do the things that, that uh, they are doing. And then the boy, right, he said, yeah, because I'm trying to imitate you because you sure taught us. And the boy told her, because I'm just, you know, <laughs> I just play like I didn't see him. <laughs> He so that he said, well, yes, and she put the rod on us, and we were too wrong. She said, we deserved every lick that she gave us. I looked at him. I said, you did? <laughs> he said, you know we did. <laughs> he, just, so he, uh, he got up in, the, in this auditorium. He said, now, she's not, she wasn't a whipping teacher. So now she didn't use no switch all the time. Mm -mm. She'd make us stay in that school sometime. Uh, we had an errand to do that, you know, that uh, said, no, you're going to have to do this to someone, so and so. We were under punishment for things. So there wasn't no spanking all the time. I told him no, because I didn't think spanking was the answer. But if they other children were out there having a good time playing and they couldn't go, see, that's the thing. They didn't like that. And, and I knew that. So I didn't have very many problems with them getting in trouble at all. <laughs> I sometimes I, I think about it, I say, well, Lord, you were good to me. Because very seldom, very seldom, if ever, a parent came out there raising sand. Because I would go to the homes, sit down on the steps. If they were on the steps, I'd sit on the steps with them. Oh, no, to get your chair. I said, no, I'm sitting down here with you. And I talked to them. So they say, she's just a dime to earth teacher, that's all. Because I always try to, f not because I got a degree, you know, I'm not the biggest shot guard. I'd go sit right, if they were down like that, I'd sit right down there with them. And they would tell somebody else, who oh, say, she's nice, and she doesn't bother. So we don't have to go all out the way for her. We just let her come sit. Come here. You got to fix up, say, no, you don't either. She said, because if you're out in the yard, she come around the yard with you. And that's what I did all the way through my coming along. I think it paid off in the end. Mm -hmm. I'm sure it did. Mm -hmm. There were a lot of changes in the years that you were teaching. Oh, yes. It was during the time of integration. Mm -hmm. That's right. What That's can you right. tell us about that? Well, let me tell you about the integration. We had a white, we had a black principal, but we had a coordinator over him. So when I met, uh, 
this doctor, he said, are you Lasse Bird? And I was going to say, say, Lord, what is it? I said, yes, I am. He said, I heard a lot of talk about you. I said, talk about me? He said, it was good. It was good. It was good. He said, don't get upset. I said, because oh, I was about to get upset. <laughs> and then he told me about, uh, he'd heard about the time I take of the children and uh, how I worked with them in the community. He said, that's nice. He said, I wish I could get more teachers to do that. And when the, some people would come from the school board, they, they would have guests coming in. When they'd come in, they say, we want to, it's one teacher you got, we want to meet. And he said, most time, he said, most time it would be you. I said, really? I said, what, what was wrong? He said, well, nothing wrong. He said, because of some of the good things you've done and some of the children you have taught are up there now working. And they are still can uh, relate some of the things that you helped them with that you helped them up there. I said, really? I said, well, thank you for telling them. Because first I thought it was something was wrong. <laughs> I said, you always think it's wrong before you think it's right. <laughs> it must have been a difficult time, though. Oh, yes. It was a difficult time because they felt black teachers don't know nothing. They don't know nothing. But they end up had to come to me for help. That was the one thing. They had to come to me for help. Some of them didn't know. They, they had degrees and didn't know. And it was, that was kind of bad. I, I, I really wondered how it happened, but then it wasn't left with me. But I helped them, many of them out. But I was glad to do it. And I didn't do it to boast of it, because I didn't tell the principal nothing about it. I didn't tell any of them. I just go in and just come in there, hey, can, can you help me do so-and-so? What about so-and-so? I said, I'll be around there after a while. And I'd go on and I'd see what I could do to help them out. And uh, there's a lot of them, not, it's not so many of them now that I know, but there are a few of them still. If you mention my name to the mommy who I say, oh, child, I know her. You ain't telling about her. Yeah, she helped her so-and-so, so she did so-and-so. And so. so I was glad that I could. Mm. Uh, can you remember any of the particular problems that the teachers were having? Mm-hmm. Yes, goodness. Well, what one thing is, when, um, when they integrated the schools, they, I, I, and I don't know this, I just look like they, 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 they said, well, we're going to push you out and you're going to be in. And a lot of them were really pushed out. I wasn't, but there were any number of them. A lot of black teachers lost their jobs? They sure did. They really did. That's true. There was a move away from the black schools. Mm-hmm. They left yes. some of those schools mm -hmm. vacant. That's true. This is true. And, but there were some good white ones that they tried to, you know, make, and they turned out to be your best friend. They were just as sweet as they could be. They were as helpful as they could be. Because I guess their mothers had trained them differently. But then we had some nasty ones, <laughs> being honest about it. Oh, yes, they look at you. But when I came back home and told my mother and father about it, my mother told me, she said, did you get on your knees to pray before you went to school? So I said, yes, I did. She said, well, you do that every morning, and you won't have no trouble. And that's true. I didn't. I didn't have any trouble. And I just thank the good Lord for it, but I was able to work with any of them. And you know, there was a time they said, well, I don't want to work with so-and-so. They didn't ever tell them that about me. My principal told me, he said, that's one thing. He said, you got good rapport with them, said, because nobody said they didn't want to work with you. I said, well, thank you. He said, whatever you're doing, just keep doing it. I said, well, I'll try. And I tried. Did the kids have trouble, or were the adults having more well, trouble Well, the, the kids, kids I tell you what, the kids were mostly making trouble for themselves. I think parents had talked at home to them. And I just, I don't know, for some reason, they kind of looked up to me. 
and therefore I would go in their rooms and talk to them. The, the, the uh, teacher told me, said, child, please come in here and help us out, son. And I'd go in there and tell them, I said, we're all human beings. The color of our skin is a little different, but our hearts are the same. I say, so you're supposed to be nice to them. You're supposed to have respect for them because they are your superiors. We re got respect for you. I say, you must, if you got it for me, I don't want it if you don't have it for them. And I, I went to each one of those rooms in the, out there, and I would talk with them. And when they got through, one, somebody asked them, Miss Blaine, come in your room. Yeah, what she say? She told us the same thing. <laughs> I, I, I told her, I said, everybody know what you told them. Now I said, because they told us what it was. <laughs> oh, dear. Children are something else, though. But I love them. Um, let's talk a little bit about the church mm -hmm. and uh, what kinds of uh, activities mm -hmm. besides the usual church services. Mm -hmm. Well, the church, back in then, you know, the, the children were allowed to play games. And we got out there, they'd hopscop and that, that. And uh, see, I'd hopscop right along with them. <laughs> I guess that's what I got along with them as well as I did. Because I was always active. And um, still too active. That's why I got the slowest. So <laughs> but then they, the children were really, wa they wanted to get out. They wanted to be out in the open and enjoy some of it. Because see, some of the schools, they had the children, they had to stay in the classroom too long. And they didn't want the, they, but when they got out, we would take them out for a game or two and play some. Oh, they enjoyed that. I had some pictures in the book back there now where we went out and played in Ohio. They, oh, they were so happy with it. Mm -hmm. So when the teachers found out that this is what the children enjoyed, and seeing some of the white teachers came, they had some beautiful ideas, too, to uh, bring them out. So they would come out with the children. We'd take our children out for a little while. And let them play a little bit and then go back in. And they do, I say, Father, they do a much better job. Mm -hmm. Much better job. But see, to sit there a whole length of time that we have to be in school, they need some kind of little outlet. So I've been, I got some little games from other children so they could play games. The time they had to stay in there, we'd get our lesson at first. And I tell you what, they will get their lesson much better because in order to play those games, they're going to get their lesson. See? So they say, what? So when the principal wanted to check on it, I told him, come any time. You want to. I said, we get our lesson first. If the lesson is a good lesson, they don't have the, they can't play. So they always got the lesson because they wanted to play. And if they had a lazy person in there, boy, they'd get on them. <laughs> I didn't have to. <laughs> All right. Oh, boy. Well, thinking back to when you first came here and the, mm -hmm. and the first first impressions and all, what were the first businesses around here that y'all used to get your staples and your different kinds of things and mm -hmm. milk and eggs and... Uh, we had our own chickens for our eggs. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to think. The milk, we used to, someone used to come around and bring it. And they would bring it and sit on the porch for you. And you'd get it. Of course, you'd pay them, you know, after at the, certain, at, at the end of the week. So. But that's what they did, bring it and they'd put it there. Now, I think of it now. I say, it's a good thing you'd go out there and get it because, see, it was spoiled on you now to do that. But this is what they bring it to you every morning. They had a bus, certain time they would bring it. And then you put it, take it in and put it in your box. So when you have it, mm -hmm. then at the end of that week, then you pay for the week's uh, milk that they would bring to you. Mm -hmm. That went on for quite a while. And then finally, they started to go into the stores, you know, and get it. Mm -hmm. And uh, drug stores, were there, which, did you go into town? Uh, Eckert's was there. Now, Wall Green was not there, mm -hmm. but Eckert's was there. And um, 
Let me just tell I had a we had a doctor here. I was trying to think of his name. I was been trying to think of it during the day before you got here because I wanted to tell you about him. He when we had to go to the hospital, so we went to his hospital. It was right on university, out university, near what's there now? What is in it? What do they have in that place now? It's something they have in there now, but the same building is still there. It was there, but they're using it for something else. But this doctor took all of his patients out there to his hospital. And we were well taken care of, because I went there. That's when I know. And I was pretty sick, but then I had, I sent, I took a child there I had here. And he did such a beautiful job, and he was so nice and kind, and the help was so nice and kind. Until they were about to ruin the other hospital, because everybody was going out there to him. Is he black I was or white? No, he's white. He was white, but you didn't know it. He made no difference. He, uh, and he had one person that was helping him there, that act nasty, he got rid of her. Mm -hmm. He told me he had to treat everybody right. And, and this is what happened there. I was trying to think of his name, because I really wanted he left here, and I think he went to Georgia, and he started business in Georgia. I can't think of his, it might come to me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, was there a dentist here in town? Who? A dentist? I don't remember, because I didn't have to go with any then. I just had, my first time going to a dentist was last year. That's right, I didn't have to go, but I had to go last year, though. I'm going to have to go back again, to see. <laughs> I know that. And where was your post office? The post office, let's see. We didn't have any down this side at all. Did you have to go downtown? You had to go, oh, you had to go to town. Mm -hmm. You didn't have any out here. Mm -mm. See, that one's a little nearer there. But see, that wasn't there. That, that one hadn't been there too terribly long now. But we, the one uptown there, it was there. And you had to go there. Get your stamps and everything. But if you, if you do only one stamp, you had to go there to get it. Mm -hmm. But in the other place, right, I didn't have any stamps. Mm -hmm. Did they deliver the mail to the houses around here, or did you have to go downtown to get your mail? Mm -hmm. No, they delivered the mail when they got ready. <laughs> you might be one or two days getting it, but you got it. Mm -hmm. Like you say, mail you should have gotten maybe Monday. You get it by Thursday. It's just one of those things. You know, nothing you can do about it. Unless you want to go to the post office and ask for it before. You could go there before the mailman left and you could pick up what you wanted. Mm -hmm. You can still do that now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's the thing we did do as a special mail, you know what? We'd get up early and go over there, get it. Mm -hmm. When y'all first moved here, that was getting in towards the Depression years. Those mm -hmm. must have been some pretty hard times. Yeah, things were kind of rough. But see, my oldest sister was teaching school and my father was presiding elder, and my mother started teaching school with my daughter. No, with my older sister. I don't keep saying daughter, it's my older sister. And therefore, pretty good money was coming in. You know, you didn't get the big money like you get now, you know that. <laughs> but then, this, this is how we managed the way we did. Not everybody had jobs mm -hmm. in those days. It was uh, mm -hmm. pretty tough. Everybody. Well, jobs are kind of hard to get. But uh, my sister went down. She got a job. 
uh, is teaching. She wasn't the principal then. She got a job teaching between here and Fort Pierce. Was it? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh huh. And then they need another teacher. And uh, she said, well, my mother can teach. So you didn't have to have all those degrees then, you know. So then my mother went down and taught with her. And she carried some other, there was another person went with her down there to, this, to the school. Because they, they did have uh, some type of qualification, but see, some of the people didn't have any at all. I mean, my mother had helped them with the kindergarten schools up here. Then she was able to go down there and work in that. Um, there was a time there just before the Depression era where land around here was booming. A lot of northerners were coming down yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, buying property. Mm -hmm. buying, they buying was going sky high. Mm -hmm. and then, then all of a sudden. Because I, uh, I bought this property here, and I was then round to, to my mother's. We were living on Brothers Avenue. And that then they had fixed this house into a big two-story house. The two-story house is still there. And then when I, I said that they, they told, called and told me about they were selling the land out here and how they were selling it. So soon I, I came out and I checked on it, and I checked on uh, they were trying to cut the lot smaller. I said, well, just put this, and I showed them what I wanted. I said, put that in one lot for me, and I started paying on it so I could do it. Then I finally came on out here and built a house on it, and here I am. <laughs> You've been right in this neighborhood here for some time. You knew the Brothers family? Oh, yes, real well. Mm -hmm. Well, I understand mm -hmm. that they had a lot to do with the, the very early settlement. Yes. Uh, what can you tell mm -hmm. us about that? The, the, I tell you about the Brothers. Uh, one of the father and the mother were members of our church. The oldest son was joined our church. All right, his, there's only one boy left now, and that's the youngest boy, but he is, he's, he, he's in bad shape. I mean, he's, I haven't been to see him because I just didn't want to see him like that. But his aunt, his brother's wife, was telling me just how bad a shape he is in. He's in real bad shape. I hate to hear it, but I think he brought it on himself okay. by not taking care of himself like he should. And he was too in love with money to, to go to the doctor like he should. And she tried to get him to go, and he didn't. But now, I don't think he'll ever be the same. I don't think he will. I don't think he's going to even enjoy his money. I think the wife's going to get a chance to enjoy it, the mm -hmm. way he's looking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> family came here a long time ago. Yes. And mm -hmm. I guess they settled right along. In they did. Uh, on that picture with me, right there, under there, that's one of the brother's wife. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And she is still living. He's dead, but she's still living. But she's in the hospital mm -hmm. down there. She's not doing the best now. But uh, she could sing. Oh, that girl could sing. Oh, she could sing. Because when I was in Miami, I, I taught in Miami 11 years, and when I was in Miami, we decided to come back here. So I said, let's go back, uh, let's go back out there and help them with the choir. She said, that's a good project for us to take. So we moved on back here, see, because I had the place here. Oh, she had to just come on, and she moved in here with me. And she, that girl could sing. Oh, she could sing. She had a beautiful voice. Beautiful voice. So she would sing, and well, I was to tell you, I went to alto. She was saying soprano. We sang duets together sometime. What she decided, she said she's gonna help train a choir. The first choir, my mother started it. That was the first choir started down in the bottom down there. And.
stand up because they didn't have a choir for it. The church didn't have a choir at all. They didn't, they didn't know nothing about no choir then, see. So my mother asked my father if she could organize a choir and uh, let them start. Well, there's one lady still living that was with us then. She's in over in one of those towers over there, and mainly read it. She joined with my mother, and they got busy, honey, and got the choir going. And oh, we had some good music there. Can you remember any of those early songs? The songs hmm? that, do you remember any of the early favorite hymns? Or? Uh, was with Amazing Grace was one they always used. They're like, Near on my God today. I remember I happened to be looking at one of the programs and they're not here recently. They like Near on my God today. They like Amazing Grace. I remember that. Uh, and they used to sing, This is the light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm going to let it shine. I know some people are still using that now, but way back in the day, we did used to sing that. And he used to tell us, everybody gonna let the light shine, stand up. And boy, them people would grab it, kind of clap in the hand. <laughs> it was an interesting thing. Would you give us a little taste of the song? Would you sing us a hmm? little bit of the song? <laughs> My voice isn't good enough to me sing nothing. <laughs> and I see, because uh, I used to lead it, that's what I, this little light, we used to sing that. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm going to let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm going to let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm going to let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Uh -huh. so. And believe it or not, that's uh, they singing, they singing it now. Just a lot of mine, I'm going to let it shine. They're still singing it. They praise the Lord for that. And cut. End of this. Whoa. Interview with Flossie Bryant, August the 30th, 1992 at 2702 Main Street, Melbourne, Florida. Interviewer Nancy Yaseko, cameraman Robert Gilbert, equipment camera Sony BVP50, beta SP recorder Sony BVW35, audio on channels two and four. Copyright Brevard County Historical Commission, 1992, Flossie Bryant, tape three. Talk about with uh, family life, mm -hmm. how you celebrated the holidays. Uh, we had a beautiful holidays. What we do most times, we take all the family, because I love the beach, and we go to the beach, mm -hmm. and we'd take a pick, pick a basket, and we'd eat right out there. Mm -hmm. And it was, a, and we look forward to that. That's what I told you. There were things he would do to make us be good, and we said we wanted to go to the beach. We wanted to enjoy the things like that. My mother would fix a big basket and fix it for us. We'd go out there and have a good time. And I, I look at the little children now and see how they're flipping around. I say, that's just the way I used to do it. <laughs> it was a pretty wild ride getting over to the beach back in the 20s. That's right. That's right. Tell us how you'd mm -hmm. go. Well, well, the only thing, I'd be in the car riding and I'd <laughs> Because see, when the, 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 you know, the bridges and things, you know, weren't like that. You had to go around about, did they? And, but then we would get there. And then sometimes they would leave. They just leave this area altogether, you know, and go. You see, we knew about those beaches up to Jacksonville, so we used to go back up there because we knew about them. We'd ask Daddy, could he take us back up there? And Mom and they'd fix his big basket and thing, and we'd, going up there. Um, what about holidays like Halloween? Did you celebrate Halloween? Halloween, we would have to go out early. We got to look, my mother would make us see, look, cause she, my mother's a seamstress. She'd make us our little Halloween co costume, but we could not uh, stay out. You see, late. we had to go. And how we would, we would go, but they would, be just within that block where they could see us. They'd come slowly up behind us. 
So they, they, and after a certain amount of time, they'd pick us up and bring us back home. And that's when I never did hang out too much on Halloween. Kind of a dangerous night to be out. Yeah, that's right. So I would be in looking out. <laughs> and to this day, I don't go out. Mm -mm. And Thanksgiving? Well, Thanksgiving, we always, we, we knew there was a time for us to pray. And of course, the turkey, we had it, they'd, they'd have the turkey, they'd have all the food fixed for you. And what we would do, my, when, well, my mother left, you know, after she, you know, she, that she left us, but all the while when she was there, she would have that turkey baked, have that dressing, or that, I think about that dressing, now that would be the best dressing. Oh, goodness. I'd rather have dressing than have the turkey. <laughs> I didn't want anything but the wing of the turkey. That's the part I wanted. So they always made sure I got the, a wing. Mm -hmm. Kevin, in big wings, you had some. <laughs> but I used to enjoy it. I imagine uh, Christmas was tied up with things at the church. Well, yes. Yes, but Christmas time. You see, we'd always have uh, to go out. We had to go out to get to go out and get this big tree for the church house. But we still had to get one for our house. Mine is out there in the garage right now, all covered over, all decorated. All I had to do is put it back down. <laughs> so we always, we always covered a tree. And everybody would help fix a Christmas tree. They, you, 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 one would be fixing theirs this way, and the sister would fix theirs this way. And uh, that's the way, you, and if it's not the right way, she wouldn't say, don't, is that the way you want yours to go? Stand up, look at it, say, no, ma'am, I don't want it to go like that. I want it to go the other way. See, some was this way and some was that way. And that's the way she got us to straighten it out without complaining, which I thought was good. I'll tell you, I don't know. I, I told them, I don't know, I just think about my mother. Sometimes I call myself talking to her, thanking her for what she'd done for me during those years. When I see so many others have gone so, you know, strayed so far away, but she was a beautiful, she lived the life before us, so therefore the following her footsteps, we wouldn't go wrong. And of course, my father was the same way. And I was so happy because I even see ministers today are not doing what they're supposed to do. So it makes me appreciate them more and more. Mm -hmm. I really appreciate my mother and father and that. Because it just looked that both of them were Christ-like people. Could have been just the opposite. Mm -hmm. Well, you knew the whole community. You you got involved in politics to some extent. Sure did. <laughs> oh, goodness, yes. Uh, How did that start? Well, when they, they we had a, a Democratic club, and we started off with the Democratic club working. Well, I was the secretary, and all the ministers and things would come in, they would talk about the, the different things like that. And I told uh, the church, I said, let's go get in there too. See? I was just a person, just, uh -huh. and we went over to the meeting. Uh, I'm trying to think who was, she worked for the, for the county a long time, for the city a long time. Kay Herschel. Kay Herschel was working with them way back there in those days. And the same lady, that uh, wrote that article for me. She was working with them. So we just all, we just got together and I just said, well, I'm gonna be a part of it. I'm gonna have an office in it. And that's the way I felt. And when I started talking with them, and different ones, they'd say, yeah, I said, give it, she, she can work, say, let her work, she'll work. And this is how I got started into it. And then when I went to the meetings, well, I was, I was always, I wouldn't sit there and you don't say nothing. If there's something that was good, I never, I never was a negative person. But if something I could say was good that would help somebody, I would do it. I never would argue, because my dad and lost to say, you don't argue at church things. So I never would argue over anything, an organization or anything. So we would go to these meetings, and then they would say, we don't want so-and-so and so. I just sit there and smile. I wouldn't say nothing. Then if, if they give reasons for it, 
then if they give a good reason, then I try to go along with them. But I'm, I never take a negative attitude. I don't take it today. <laughs> I just rather stay out of don't say nothing at all and be negative about things. Sometimes in being there, you would hurt somebody. Then again, you won't, but then you don't know who you might hurt. You might hurt somebody that's a dear friend of yours. You hate to hurt them. You don't want to hurt people just to be hurting them. Because some people enjoy that, but I didn't. I didn't enjoy that at all. Uh, I'm curious, where were the, was this the general democratic uh, party mm -hmm. group here in Melbourne, or was it just in your well, community? No, the democratic group here in uh, Melbourne and in the county. Mm -hmm. See, the ones from the county would come down and meet with us. We'd go up there and meet with them. We would exchange ideas. So then, after a period of time, we had a large group here. So all we had to do was uh, just work with our group. We'd always invite them, or we, if they wanted us to help with anything, we would always do that. But then we started working with our group here, and I had, I've always been a part of it. I was always actively involved in it. Then they made me a delegate to go to the National Convention. and. They said, that she, they said what they, they told me, she's given service all this time, and she's never asked to go, and she's not asking now. But we certainly hope that you will send her. And they did. They unanimously voted to send me to the National Convention. And I enjoyed it. It was nice. It was Which one was that? Uh, in New York. It was in New York. That was, uh, which convention was it? I got the records over there. I can show it to you. I can't think of it. Right now, I won't think of it. But it was our national convention, and uh, it was beautiful. I just enjoyed it. Who was running for president? Wait a minute, um, Carter. Carter was running for president. I have a letter in my book now from him thanking me. I got one from Lord and Charles telling me how he appreciated my helping him. And I just, I just, in fact, I really didn't know I had kept the things. I thought I'd throw them away. I have to take these books out trying to get some material for you. I said, Lord, here's all this stuff still in here. Are you involved with politics even today? A little. Not as much as it was because, see, it required you to go a whole lot. You went at night and everything, and I, I'm not going out at night now. But they call, and they'll ask for advice, and I'll share it. And I meet with them. I meet with them sometimes, but not as much as I used to. So oftentimes now they'll come to our uh, Democratic meetings. And uh, I think this is one supposed to be pretty, I think they're 26, I think, 6 to 26. And all the people who are running for office, but now they'll come there and they'll talk with you there. Mm -hmm. Were you ever tempted to run for office yourself? I didn't want to. I just wanted to be a helper and a do. <laughs> and they thought when I, after uh, being a delegate to the National Convention, I think they thought I was going to come back and run for office. Mm -mm. I said, I want to do what I can do right here. So help where I can help. And let them go on up there. So a lot of them wanted that, but I didn't. Mm -hmm. well, let's see, on a whole other subject, the, the space program came in while you were here. Mm -hmm. Changed things a little bit. That's when they're talking about the Teflon, <laughs> the space program. <laughs> yeah, that's what that was. That's what they did. The Teflon thing came with us. Did you ever watch any of the rocket launches? Did you ever watch any of the rocket launches? Yes, I did. Um, yes, I did watch some of them. Mm -hmm. Yes. And they asked me, they said, would you like to go up? And I said, no, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you. Mm -mm. Mm. Not me. I don't want to go up in there. Let's see. Uh, on a different subject, um, were you ever here when a hurricane came close or storms were pretty bad? Yes, I was right here. Uh -huh. I, we thought this was going to be bad. See, that's why I had see those shutters I have up there. 
so I can pull them down and lock them, and then the wind more hardly take them away. I got them all around my house. But I didn't take them down this time because I just felt, I said, I don't believe it's going to hit us that hard. And I was glad I did because I had the job to put them back up. But I didn't take them down. And we didn't get it, you know. It was, the boys got Miami though. But you know, my, it didn't get my granddaughter. She's at uh, Cooper City. The only thing happened to her was that they, the limbs on the tree fell off but didn't do anything to her house, not to the windows or anything. So I felt that they were blessed. They were really blessed, mm -hmm. really blessed. But she, she's right on 100. And uh, they have a, a row of trees. Just as you come off 100, still when you go right around the curve, it's still 100. And the row of trees are there. That's the only thing that divides her from the highway is that row of trees because they were on the same thing. And they say the wind got with them, but didn't any of them hurt them. I was glad of that. Because I immediately called to try to find out. And my son-in-law did the same thing. They said, no, they weren't hurt. And I was glad. And my daughter left her house and went up to Cooper City. But the, her, the reason she left home, because her lights and telephone was off. She couldn't get to anyone. So she went up to Cooper City and stayed till it was over. Then she went on back home. And they told her lights were gone. She went on back home. Do you remember Hurricane Donna? Came yes, I sure do. Uh -huh. Yeah, I remember Hurricane Donna. Do I? <laughs> it, Hurricane Donna gave us a fright, really. We were really afraid that they were going to, well, we kind of thought they were going to sweep us out the way. But then the winds changed. But you know, we've been lucky. They look like when they get here, they always change and go around. I said, Lord, maybe we don't just gonna pray in people. God is good to us. And this time I said, Well, Lord, they say, Are you gonna leave home? I said, mm -mm. I said, I'm gonna get on my knees until the Lord will take care of me in my house. And that's what I did. I stayed here. I was there by myself too. But that's all right. Well, I wasn't by myself because God was here with me. But I mean, you know, for other people they weren't here. But I got along all right. mother when she was born what her name was she was born when was your mother born uh, wait a minute. uh what was january i thought i knew definitely when it was i couldn't <laughs> look at i got it down but i could i can't remember now that's awful isn't it well just a year would be good if you can recall about when she was born mm. isn't that a shame <laughs> that's terrible Maybe I should just ask you an easier question. What what was her full name? My mother, mm -hmm. Eddie Jane Bird, Whitehead. Wait, no, Eddie Jane Whitehead Bird. She was a Whitehead. Mm -hmm. Eddie Jane Whitehead Bird. That was her name. Because mm -hmm. she, she, she uh, her father was uh, a big something in Baldwin, Florida. Mm -hmm. He's a big fellow there. I forgot about her mother. I knew the father pretty well, but I didn't know the mother so uh, <coughs> so well. Looks like she's going to church soon. that he came down here from Jacksonville. Did he want to come down this way? No, remember, uh, you, with, uh, I told you that the presiding elder, when I told you the presiding elder, uh, no, not, not as I told you, bishop. See, see, he was up in Jacksonville. The bishop lives in Jacksonville, see. So the bishop wanted him, something he wanted him to do for him, that he said, mm -mm, which was wrong. If whatever it was, he would, to him do, he'd been sinning. He told him no. 
So he got angry with him and gave him, this was the smallest child he had, so he gave him the smallest child. And so my daddy came here and made good. <laughs> so he went back and said, hmm. So the old bishop said, said the bird down there to kill us, and this bird done come with a fine car and so and so. And you know, the, the, the different ministers, you know, they call us getting back at the bishop. But it was all right. He told him, God went with him. He said, God went with me wherever I was going, so I don't have to worry. Tell us about this picture here. Oh. <laughs> This is, we were, this, this is when I was to that uh, convention. And we went to the, as a delegate. And uh, this, what they were doing, they were trying to make changes in things, you know, that they didn't need to make. And certain, when I stood up and told them what I was for, and looked like all the hands went up and things. So they say, we say that you follow them, but they say you call the rest of us to go over too. <laughs> You're a leader, not a follower. I'm a leader. But now, you know, I told no, I told them in order to be a good leader, I had to be a good follower. So I had to be learn to be a good follower first. Then that's why I tell them this now. I say now, in order to lead something, you make sure you're a good follower. If you can be a good follower, then you can make a good leader. So a lot of them don't want to be a follower, they just want to jump right into leadership. <laughs> President Carl. <laughs> oh boy. It's been a long time since we've had a Democrat in the White House. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's right. They're trying to get Clinton now, so I don't know. Maybe yes, maybe no.